Welcome to 5 Minute School. Today's video will be talking about the movement of filtrate through the nephron. We know that the blood is initially going to arrive via an afferent arterial to the nephron and there will be filtration of the blood so that the large molecules can't pass through from the glomerulus into the next part of the tubule. So the large molecules are filtered out and we have a filtrate which is formed which passes into the proximal convoluted tubule which is this, this region of the tubule here. Now, the proximal convoluted tubule consists of a single layer of cuboidal cells and these cuboidal cells have microvilli. They have many, many microvilli and the purpose of the microvilli is to increase the surface area for reabsorption. Now, the molecules which are reabsorbed are these molecules which you can see here. We have glucose, amino acids, proteins, we have some ions as well such as sodium ions, potassium ions and calcium ions. Now these uh, molecules and ions here are important for the body. That's why they are reabsorbed. Now they are re reabsorbed from the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule into the cuboidal cells and from there they pass into the peritubular capillaries and you can't see them from this image here but there are capillaries which wrap around the uh, nephron and it enables uh, well it's a place for the uh, molecules which the body requires to move into so it can get reabsorbed back into the body or waste products such as urea uric acid can move from the peritubular capillaries into the lumen of the tubule of the nephron. So moving on we have the reabsorption of these molecules and ions here. Later on at this point in the proximal convoluted tubule we have movement of um, these molecules here and ions from the peritubular capillaries into the lumen of the nephron. So we have urea, uric acid, creatinine, some other drugs, uh, hydrogen ions and ammonium ions here. And then at this point here, we have the loop of Henle. Up until this point, the location of the nephron has been in the cortex. So it's going to be in this part of the kidney. When we reach the loop of Henle, it moves into the renal medulla. So the loop of Henle is progressed downwards into the renal medulla. And the reason for this is the renal medulla has a high salt concentration. So this helps for the reabsorption of water because water is going to move out from the uh, lumen of the loop of Henle here and into the surrounding capillaries or the tubular cells. And what's going to happen is we are going to generate a high concentration gradient and this is going to enable more water to pass and at a faster rate. So we have water removal from the descending loop of the loop of Henle here and we have urea which is moved from the peritubular capillaries or s surrounding columnar cells into the urea into the lumen of the loop of Henle and in the ascending loop we have um, reabsorption of sodium ions, potassium ions and chloride ions. So moving on we have the distal convoluted tubule here which has less microvilli in comparison to the proximal convoluted tubule and at this point here we have reabsorption of more sodium ions, chloride ions, uh, carbonate ions and water as well. And then finally this region here is the collecting duct. This part of the collecting duct we have um, removal of water and urea as well. Now something that you need to know when we go back from the loop of Henle to this region here we are back in the cortex so this part is in the renal medulla and then we are back in the cortex and then from this point back to the collecting duct we then move back into the medulla and the fluid here is going to collect at the renal pelvis eventually pass through the ureter and it's drained into the urinary bladder. 